I think they beat it into you. You just learn to pretend it didn't happen to you. Harbor Springs, without a doubt, one of the crown jewels of northern Michigan and in the heart of this quiet Emmett County community sits Holy Childhood Catholic Church. This was the site of the Holy Childhood Native American Boarding School. This archway is all that's left of the school. The boarding school opened in the 1800s as part of a nationwide effort by the U.S. government to wipe out Native American culture and address a so-called Indian problem. The schools forced students to learn English, and they were forbidden from speaking their native language or practicing many of their traditions. Kim Feig and Linda Cobe both attended Holy Childhood and say that was the case in Harbor Springs. They cut everyone's hair short, boys and girls, and they assigned us our clothes, and you only had so many outfits to wear. We were expected to look a certain way, talk a certain way. You don't dare um, challenge the authority there, the nuns. Both say the nuns were abusive towards Native American students, physically, emotionally, and sometimes sexually. And it seemed like you couldn't do anything, say anything. I remember getting slapped in the face for smiling at my cousin across the table. The worst part at the beginning was hearing all the other girls crying at night. You tried to cry silently because they didn't need much of an excuse to beat, beat you for making too much noise. Halloween was the worst. There was a time they dropped us all off in the cemetery. All us little girls put us in the back of a truck and dropped us off in the night and made us find our way back. Another Halloween, I found a bone in my bed with my name written on it. We would hear more of sisters coming. Nobody would, you could hear their clicking on the hardwood floor and or their clearing of their throat and we just didn't want to get beaten, <laughs> so nobody said anything. In many cases, parents had no choice but to send their children to these schools. If they didn't, they risk losing government rations and supplies. Our parents somehow just cooperated. I think they were powerless to do anything. We just knew that when the van showed up to pick up the kids, well, we'd run out in the woods and try and hide for a while, but that didn't really work. They'd wait until we came out. And students were allowed few, if any, personal possessions. I just grabbed a couple of my things and put it in a paper bag, and when we got there, they took them, and I don't know what they did with them, burned them or what. They didn't want you to have anything that reminded you of home. Kim left the school in 1974, Linda in 1965, but the school would remain open until the 1980s before being torn down in the 2000s. But the memory of what happened there for generations has hardly faded. The archway doesn't bother me, the bell of the church does. Hearing that church bell just, I don't even know how to explain what it did to me. Made my heart jump a few times, I know that. Anytime I hear the word Harbor Springs, it just takes me right back to the boarding school of Holy Childhood and what went on there. The torturous day after day, thinking you're never gonna get out of there and, and the loneliness of missing, <laughs> missing your family and um, the effect that it had on us. We also reached out to the Diocese of Gaylord about the allegations from Holy Childhood who sent us a statement from their apostolic administrator that reads in part, these matters are deeply concerning and I join the past bishops of this diocese who have expressed sincere apology for wrongdoing that has caused such lasting harm and suffering. The diocese remains committed to an affirming relationship with tribal members and our prayer is for continued healing for all involved, particularly those who are still suffering today. And Pope Francis recently said he is willing to travel to Canada to take part in healing and reconciliation with Native American communities. That visit is expected to happen in the coming months. Coming up tomorrow night in our part two of our special report, David Lydon and photojournalist Josh Monroe look at the effort to help survivors of Holy Childhood heal and reinvigorate their Native American culture.